Osmosis is a specific type of passive transport in which water moves through a selectively permeable membrane, such as a cell's plasma membrane. Water is moving in an overall downhill direction along its concentration gradient from an area of higher water concentration on one side of the membrane to an area of lower water concentration on the other side of the membrane. Because it's passive, no energy in the form of ATP is needed. So in this cell, the higher water concentration is outside the cell and the lower water concentration is inside the cell. Water is moving in both directions across the membrane, but the net movement of water will be into the cell. We can also think of water's movement during osmosis relative to the concentration of solute on either side of the membrane. Water moves from an area of lower solute concentration on one side of the membrane, a more dilute solution, toward an area of higher solute concentration, a more concentrated solution, on the other side of the membrane. We can remember this movement with the help of a couple of phrases. Water will shoot toward the higher solutes, and water will flow to where the solutes go. During osmosis, water molecules move across the cell membrane in two ways. They are small enough to pass in between the phospholipid molecules making up the membrane, and they can travel through special channel proteins called aquaporins. These integral membrane proteins have a hydrophilic pore, or tunnel, that allows water molecules to move very efficiently into or out of the cell. We can demonstrate osmosis artificially in a lab environment using this U-tube apparatus, which is a curved glass tube filled with two volumes of different aqueous solutions separated by a selectively permeable membrane. The membrane is artificial and mimics a real cell membrane. It is porous and allows water molecules to flow in either direction. However, the solute molecules, shown in red, cannot cross the membrane. They are restricted, so they are selected against. For osmosis to occur, we must begin with a concentration gradient, a difference between a higher water concentration and a lower water concentration. So let's set up our starting conditions for osmosis. In the left arm, we'll start with a solution containing only pure water with 0% solutes. We'll use salts, sodium chloride, as our solutes. This is our area of high water, low solute concentration. And in the right arm, we'll place a more concentrated solution containing 10% salts. This is our area of low water, high solute concentration. So as osmosis begins, water molecules move in both directions across the membrane, but the overall net movement of water will be from the left arm with 0% NaCl into the right arm with 10% NaCl following its concentration gradient. Remember the solutes are restricted to the right arm. They can't move across the membrane so the water level in the left arm begins to drop, while the water level in the right arm begins to rise. As the water level in the right arm increases, its fluid pressure, called hydrostatic pressure, also increases. This higher pressure pushes more water molecules from right to left across the membrane but the net movement of water is still into the right arm. Osmosis will occur until equilibrium is reached. Equilibrium is a balanced state where equal numbers of water molecules are moving from right to left due to the higher hydrostatic pressure in the right arm, as are moving from left to right due to osmosis. Another force at work is the solution's osmotic pressure. 
which is proportional to the concentration of the solutes that cannot cross the membrane. So the higher the solute concentration of a solution, the higher the osmotic pressure. In our example, the solution in the right arm has the higher osmotic pressure. We can restore the starting conditions of the water volumes in each arm by taking a mechanical piston, like a small plunger, and push down on the solution in the right arm. As more pressure is applied to this solution, more water molecules are forced across the membrane into the left arm. The amount of pressure we apply to the plunger is equivalent to the osmotic pressure. In our demo, the osmotic pressure is the amount of pressure needed to stop water's movement from the left arm into the right arm. The osmotic pressure of any solution does not generate water's movement during osmosis. Instead, like the brakes on a car, this pressure prevents water's movement during osmosis. It's the pressure that stops osmosis.